say hello, Danny. You're you're being recorded. You're beautiful. Stop. Look at look, look how good looking Danny is. Look at that. Look at that solid hairline. Those just just dude, they're you're a in, handsome man. son of a bitch, Danny. They're, they're coming in, man. Look no. at me. I got pimples all over my face, and I'm bald, and I'm just. Nah. You still get pimples, man? Come on. <laughs> Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna go over uh, FinViz Screener. It's a very powerful tool. And uh, first we'll talk about you know the basics of it, and then we'll go into uh, screeners for long-term investing, value investing, swing trading. We'll mention gap up as well, just because, and then also a screener for options. And if you end up liking this video, uh, please do us a favor and just like and subscribe. It helps us grow. Uh, Danny, let's get to it. So the first screener that we're gonna discuss, uh, I'll start just from when you go to finviz.com is for long-term fundamental analysis and, and investments. So something you're gonna buy and hold for the next, at least the next year to several years out. Um, and the different criteria, the basic ones initially, uh, that I like to set up to whittle down the list from you know, 7,000 to a workable figure. Uh, you're trying to get down to 50 or so to not have a crazy number of stocks you're trying to you know, go through along the way. So when you go to finviz.com, you're gonna to wanna to just hover over here and select screener and click on that. And that will bring up all of the stocks they have in, on their webpage, or, which is 7,634 that you can select upon. This is a default look here. The first thing I always do is set up the market cap and I set a minimum so that I'm not looking at any company that isn't worth at least $300 million. A lot of investors will actually uh, go higher and go to 2 billion, but there are some companies I like that are worth a, a billion or, or you know, in that range between 2 billion and 300 million. So we'll start with that. As you select them, you'll see the list starts to get cut down. We just, by doing that, cut the list in half, uh, basically down to 3,200 now from 7,000 and change. From there, I do like it to be sorted by market cap, typically, uh, small, uh, largest to smallest. So now you'll see the, uh, the big mega caps at the top of the list. Um, and then you can kind of just choose from there if you want to buy something, for instance, that uh, isn't too overpriced. You'll want to look at, a, uh, say, a price to earnings ratio under I mean, this crazy market, let's say 25. And now our 3,200 became 1,470. And you'll see that as we start selecting things, um, the, that number keeps getting smaller and smaller. So you have less homework to do on, on a particular company you might like. I like to keep the price to sales ratio under three. Uh, the whole market right now is at two, um, but at least like that, you, uh, you still have quite a few to choose from. And now we're at 1,000 already, very quickly from 7,000. So with just three options selected. With the market the way it is and, and you know, companies being kind of low on cash, is price over cash one you should look at? Is that No, because the problem is there that um, sometimes they might not have, when I say they, Finviz, might not have that data put in. Um, once you get into some of these more granular ones, um, sometimes they just don't have the data. So you might actually lock, knock out a, a stock from your list, uh, from the screen that would actually be something you might be interested in. So I try to keep it, when it comes to the financial, like fundamentals, I try to just stay with the top line, very clear, top, uh, important numbers, uh, because those, you aren't going to erroneously, uh, you know, exempt stocks that you might otherwise be interested in. Okay. Um, you do want to avoid ones with high debt to equity. That, that is a great question and a segue to your question, actually. Uh, in this environment, it's very costly to raise capital, and, and it's very dangerous to have a lot of debt because uh, cash flow and, uh, and sales are very questionable right now. Who knows when they'll normalize? So you want to keep the debt to equity ratio low, ideally. So I wish you could do custom, but you have to pay for that service. So we'll just do under one. And now our list is down to 90% less than it was initially. Basically. What does under one mean, though? So they have less debt than they have equity. So let's say they borrowed a uh, dollar. That means they have at least a dollar oh one worth of, uh, of actual equity, uh, whether it's cash or shareholder equity. Um, you don't want a high figure there because that, that just means they're using a lot of leverage and a lot of leverage means a lot of bills to pay and, and more likely that they, uh, they struggle if there isn't some sort of cash flow uh, coming in. So just by doing these four, uh, we've got a, a pretty workable list already. I typically will uh, go through the technical side as well and look for stocks that are performing decently. You really don't want to be buying a stock that's just perpetually just plummeting or perpetually going up because you just don't know when that, that trend turns, uh, turns around at that point. Um, so you can actually just, depending on, on your own preference, uh, I, I like to look at something that is not oversold, 
So ideally above 40, so it hasn't been just dumped relentlessly and, and that whittled it a little bit. Ideally, you'd actually want to have this figure lower for a real safe long-term investment, um, ideally under one, honestly. And that really lowers the list. Now you're seeing the Walmarts of the world. I would avoid energy. Uh, it's a sector that hasn't done well and probably will continue to struggle for quite some time with oil uh, as cheap as it is. But you get a pretty good list here now if you avoid uh, certain sectors. Along the bottom here with these tabs, you can actually look at other criteria rather than just a sector. I actually really like looking at the financial one because this shows a dividend. So I'll actually a lot of times sort by the dividend um, and then go back to the overview to, to make sure you're avoiding certain sectors. Uh, but now you know these are dividend paying stocks that might be a much better long-term investment at that point if you're if you're in it for the long haul Let's see so canon fits all our criteria you've got price to sales below one a p ratio below 25 and a seven percent dividend yield right now which is excellent so all the numbers down here um how often are they updated by do, do they update the moment the stock price goes up or down Yes. Uh, on Finviz, if you're not paying for the uh, premium elite program or whatever, uh, it's 15 minutes delayed data. I typically do this type of screening and, and I call it just like your, your basically due diligence as far as this homework on stocks uh, on weekends or after hours so that the data is fresh because uh, it's 4 p.m. The stock market's closed and you're not having to worry about you know something refreshing or something happening throughout the day while you're searching for stuff. And then I, I would imagine the only thing that isn't updating every 15 minutes is the target price, right? Because that's like... That's, yeah, like yeah a, that's just... Uh, the target price is just the average analyst uh, price target. And do so, you know how often that would update? Typically a year or two out is what they're trying to aim for that price. Oh, okay. Good to know. Yeah, um, they don't tend to update that throughout the year except around earnings because that's when new data really comes out. Analysts are, are really data-driven. Um, so if their sales start to improve, you could expect an upgrade and the target price to, to head higher. Uh, the more popular stocks have more analysts covering it, so you can expect more analyst activity. This is all the analyst activity right here. You see the color-coded upgrades and downgrades. So going back to February of 2019, there have only been three analyst moves on this stock. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's not that common. Now, if you look at something more popular, for instance, Apple, you'll see, you see all these upgrades. This is just, just this in, year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then the target price for Apple's 308. So Apple's actually above where most analysts expect it to be in a year's time. Oh. Yeah. So that's a that's little not good. Worrisome. Yeah. CAJ has a target price of 20 mm -hmm. and it's at 20.78. So is it even worth to invest because it's kind of reached its its peak, I guess, right? Yeah, I would people I, are thinking. I don't like it there, being that it really hasn't gone anywhere since mid-March for the most part. It's kind of just stagnating while the overall market's gone up 40%. So it's a, it's a very um, big underperformer right now. <laughs> I do like utilities in this environment because people are going to continue to pay for their electricity and, and water and gas bills and all the rest. So this one's actually not terrible. Target price of 10, dividend yield of 7.7%. Very good on the earnings front and price of sales as well. Lots of green. That's what you want to see. And very little analyst coverage. So don't put much behind the target price. Actually, look at this. One upgrade in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like the, the analyst and target price, it has to be popular stocks. If not, I really don't put too much credence behind it. So you'll see, uh, I did start with the same exact criteria. I always said this. This is the first thing I do with any screener, which is the, uh, the market cap. Uh, but I did adjust this one here, which relative volume means that uh, basically the stock is, is being, has been trading far more actively than it usually does. This screener, really what it, you're looking for is higher volume in a stock. Uh, which tends to lead to the next criteria I set up, which is higher volatility. Um, and because volatility greatly affects the price of options, uh, you want to be selling options that have higher volatility because when volatility retraces and reverse, reverts to the mean, you'll make more money off it at that point. So that's pretty much all of them. Beyond that, um, yeah, that's really it. All I have set up right now are these three um, on these. And then you'll see this populates a list of 62 stocks that I would then start to look at closely as, uh, as possible option trades. It's no coincidence United Airlines is on this list. That's why I recommended it as a vertical put spread last week's video. And, and that trade has actually done very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you watched our last video and you did that trade, you, you're, you're doing pretty good right now. Yeah, on United Airlines, you'd be up $92 already. Um, pretty much, I think about half of the premium so far. The list is at 62 already. I'll go through them pretty quick anyway. So I don't yeah. want to have a list of five because then you're like, hey, I'm done. Like, right. So that's ideal where you can kind of just go through them quickly and uh, 
And when you hover over them, it shows you the chart and then I'll start to look at it if the chart looks enticing uh, to actually possibly go in and sell puts on it. You know, the, so the option screener comes in huge. Uh, that's why I have the volatility thing set there um, because when volatility spikes, man, you get a lot of premium and, and it, it tends to be a mean reverting thing anyways. 